Today I want to take a closer look at one of my favorite semiconductor companies and you guessed it, NVIDIA. This is a company that has been hit with numerous headwinds in the past few months alone. Obviously the huge slowdown in the gaming market, both from the consumer demand slowing down, but also the crypto mining slowing down as well. And most recently we heard about the United States government regulating some form of sales to China and Russia for some of their high performance accelerators. So in today's episode, I actually want to take a closer look at that, what it might deal with the overall company's total revenue, its overall gross margins, and different scenarios that can play out here. So if we take a closer look, NVIDIA SI am recording is down roughly 0.63%, sitting at $135. We can see this is super close to its 52 week low of $132.70. I do want to say I am a long term investor of NVIDIA and a lot of these headwinds i want to say even some of, even though some of them are a little bit bigger than others like this chinese market right now i do believe it's somewhat crucial at the end of the day in the long term of things i still believe nvidia will be a great great investment for me in the long term of things but we can see from its 52 week high the stock is down roughly 59 percent so let's get started with today's episode i do want to thank the motley fool for sponsoring this video and make sure to check out fool.com jose to get the top 10 stocks to buy right now so just a quick recap, on August 26 of 2022, the United States government informed NVIDIA that it has imposed a new license requirement effective immediately for any future exports to China, including Hong Kong and Russia. I just want to remind investors that this only includes the A100 and the upcoming H100 integrated circuits. Also, their products like the DGX and the AGX or any other systems which incorporates the A100 or H100 circuits are also included. The company did mention that they are no longer doing business in russia at the moment so that's not going to impact them in their revenue segment but they do mention that the company gave an outlook during its most recent quarter which they provided on august 24th of 2022 and they approximately included 400 million dollars in potential sales to china unfortunately they said now with these regulations and there has been an update that we'll talk about in a bit but theoretically they expect about 400 million dollars from china this quarter alone and i want to take a closer look at this 400 million dollars and try to understand what's the current market in china at the moment and nvidia definitely shared a lot of great information during their earnings call for example they mentioned that their data center revenue was up 61 percent year over year but was only up one percent sequentially one of the big reasons that they doubled is north america hyperscale and cloud computing customers increased but they were more than offset by lower sales to china hyperscale customers affected by economic conditions in china and that to me tells me one thing that this 400 million dollars is usually on the lower end for the chinese revenue market right because they did mention that they are seeing a slowdown here they didn't expect much growth so 400 million dollars is probably on the low side for the chinese market so if we kind of take this low end for the company of 400 million dollars per quarter per year that's roughly 1.6 billion dollars in revenue that comes from the chinese market at the same time we know that hey this is currently a bad economic time for china so that number could actually be a lot long larger in the future so i believe if nvidia is unable to produce any forms of revenue from china in the future and again we do have an update that we're going to take a closer look at but i believe in an annual basis it's going to be closer to a two billion dollar annual run rate that this company can lose if it's no longer providing form of these solutions to china and if you are enjoying today's episode make sure to hit the thumbs up as it does help me grow my overall audience if you want to support a little bit more make sure to subscribe using my link at fool.com jose if you want to learn more about the semiconductor market i am starting a newsletter check out the pinned comment below so now we know the following things we understand what's happening in china market right now we understand roughly about how much revenue is coming from that market on the low end and kind of estimating what might be on a full year annual basis now i want to take a closer look at the recent up so the company on September 1st announced that the United States government actually gave them the license to continue selling to U.S. customers in China and Hong Kong for roughly a year or so. The authorization allows the company to perform exports needed to provide support for U.S. customers of A100 through March 1st of 2023. Additionally, the United States government authorized A100 and H100 order fulfillments and logistics through the company's Hong Kong facility through September 1st of 2023. So the United States government is pretty much giving them about a one year leeway for them to end their business in China for the big accelerators that are used for artificial intelligence and machine learnings due to kind of national security risk. At the moment, this doesn't affect the company's kind of main GPU products, but it does seem to affect those bigger data center products like the A100 
and the H100. Obviously, things can change a little bit from here. So now let's take a closer look at what might happen to the overall revenue in the upcoming year. So for the gaming market, we do expect quarter three to be a very, very weak quarter for Nvidia due to overall sequential decline in the gaming market. After quarter three and quarter four, we are expected to see the new cards for Nvidia and this might overall boost or kind of create more growth in this segment. I don't believe we are gonna see the peaks that we saw previously, but at least it's gonna create a nice baseline for this company's gaming market. Now the data center market, at least for the next year or so, should be untouched. So if we are expected to continue to see growth in the North America region, like they mentioned in their most recent quarter, we should expect a sequential increase in data centers, especially since with their most recent SEC filings, they mentioned that they can still provide the overall kind of products to China at the moment. So for the next few quarters, I do believe data center market is still okay but a year from now when they have to pull out some of those big products from china this might affect the overall company's data center market outside of revenue i do believe this is also going to affect the company's gross margins at the end of the day because the gross margins from data center products tend to be a lot higher so if they are losing a big customer in the data center market i would expect gross margins to also see a bit of a decline and i do believe this is something they're going to mention in the upcoming earnings outside of margins from the loss of data center solutions i do believe this is a company that has to be very vigilant with their inventory related reserves for example in the most recent quarter the company did have inventory purchase obligations in excess of their current demand projections and cancelizations and under utilization penalties if there is a slowdown with data center this company has to be more aware of what kind of demand they need to kind of project for the upcoming years especially if their chinese market is going to take a hit so originally i thought this was really bad news for nvidia again like i mentioned in the beginning of this episode even without the chinese market i do believe nvidia and the technology that they are providing is going to be something that's needed worldwide but then i read this headline from digitimes asia this they mentioned that china may step up purchase of ai gpus from nvidia and amd prior to export ban but it makes perfect sense right because right now we did see a slowdown in the chinese market from huge cloud providers but this kind of ban at the moment might push them to make heavy heavy investments in nvidia's gpus at the moment before that export ban takes effect so if i was a huge chinese cloud provider at the moment if i knew the export ban was going to start in a year before that year i would try to buy as much inventory as i need for the long term of things and usually these products have some year lifespan and i also believe this is coming at a great time for nvidia as they are expected to release their h100 tensor core gpu soon so for those not familiar nvidia's previous generation or current generation is the a100 and that was released in may 14th of 2020 so let me just say why i'm kind of talking about the release date so we are already in 2022 so this tells me that the a100 had at least two year lifespan before a new product came out so the h100 the new product processor that they are creating is expected to be released at the end of this year so with the two-year time span this is going to be till the end of 2024 where maybe a new product might be released so in the short term there is a possibility that nvidia can actually see a boost in their data center market because like we saw the chinese market was pretty slow right now but if they want to get their hands into some of these products they know they have to you do it pretty soon before the export ban continues so that's it for today's episode i really just wanted to take a closer look at nvidia share my overall thoughts taking a closer look at what could happen in the upcoming year for this company like i mentioned as a long-term investor i'm still super bullish in this company but i do believe there's a lot of short-term pain unfortunately for nvidia and its shareholders